this is Dr. B again. Uh, as the title slide says, today we're talking about address modes. And hopefully you've read the chapter already and have an idea of what this means. When we talk about address modes, these are the different ways a, an assembly instruction can get its data. And we've already seen some in the with some of the instructions we've discussed, but we haven't really thought about it in these terms. And there's actually more address modes than what we've, we've seen already. So let's review. You've seen something like this. LDA, which means load into the accumulator, hex value 4000. When expressed this way, this is what we call an absolute address. Literally, go out to address 4 zero 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 grab the 8-bit value that's in it and put that 8-bit value into the accumulator so L, uh, load into the accumulator from an absolute address so we go out to you know four zero zero in memory find what's in it bring what's in it into our accumulator this is what we call the absolute addressing mode Almost, uh, a lot of instructions will, will implement this one. Uh, it means an instruction can reference memory using an absolute address. So add with carry can do it. So what this will do is finds the contents of 12EF, adds, the con adds those contents to whatever's currently in the accumulator. Here we have load into the X register, hex 4567. In other words, we look at address 4567, grab the value that's in it, put that value into the X register. Another one you have already seen is called the immediate address mode. Not really dealing with an address at all. When we talk about an immediate value, it's just a hard-coded constant. And we indicate this mode using the pound sign. So if I wanted to add a decimal 42 to the accumulator, I would do add with carry, pound 42. And notice that is a decimal value in this case. If I wanted to use a hex value, say if I was loading something into the Y register, still preface it with pound because that indicates immediate, and then give the hex value starting with a dollar sign. So pound dollar zero A would take the literal value 0a and put it into the Y register. It's not an address, it's it's a constant that's coded, hard-coded into the assembly. We can do it with binary uh, representation as well. So in this case, we're going to subtract with carry pound percent 1011010, and the percent simply indicates that this is a uh, a binary value. All three of these different ways of representing uh, integers, uh, we can use them as, as needed. But immediate, very simple, we're just loading, adding, subtracting, whatever. Uh, we're taking a constant that's been hard-coded into, uh, into the assembly and putting that into our register and, you know, subtracting, adding, whatever. So what's the difference between absolute and immediate addressing? Short version. Absolute addressing uses a memory address. The, the actual data comes from that memory location. Contrast with immediate addressing, which is simply a hard-coded constant. There's no actual interaction with, with memory when we talk about immediate addressing. So longer version of this, a uh, couple of examples. Here we have LDA, so load into the accumulator, hex address 5000. So when we do that, we go out and find address 5000. We look at its contents, put that into the accumulator. So in this case, our accumulator will get the contents of 5000. Versus LDA, load into the accumulator, pound $40. In other words, um, the immediate value uh, in hex of 4.0. If we do that, it'll just immediately load 4.0 into our accumulator. No need to actually go out to, that, to, add, uh, to memory. Uh, the other fairly simple addressing mode before we get into the, the 
meatier ones. It's called implied addressing. Um, and I'm actually using this term a little loosely. Um, I think some of these may not technically be implied addressing, uh, but further distinctions are not really useful for us right now. In implied addressing, there actually is nothing after the instruction. You simply have the instruction itself that has some implied places that it gets its data from. So one example is TAX, which transfers from the accumulator to the X register. We simply write it as TAX and go on, then because there's no no memory needed, no immediate needed, anything like that. It just takes what's in the uh, accumulator, moves it to the X register. Uh, another one is increment the Y register. Uh, what this does is it will make it will take the Y register and add one to it in a single instruction. Uh, implied register address here is the Y register, uh, so we don't actually have to do anything else with it. Uh, another one is clear the carry bit, and for this one, the implied address is the status register. So these are three examples of instructions that they, they effectively don't have a parameter. There's no address or immediate or anything out after it that um, for it to do its job. It can do it uh, without those. So those are the simpler addressing modes. Uh, let's, let's move on into some that are a little hairier, I guess we'd say. First is zero page addressing. Now, zero page addressing, um, as far as I know, is, is fairly unique to the 6502, um, and it, it's variants. I've never, you know, I've never heard of this elsewhere. It might be, but um, I don't think this is something you're really going to necessarily see um, in, in a in a general rule across other other architectures. The 6502, uh, as we've said before, has 64k of memory space we can divide that up into 256 equal chunks called pages. Each of these pages is 256 bytes long. And you can see some examples of how the pages are laid out here. Page zero goes from address 0000 to 00FF. Page one goes from address 0100 to zero, excuse me, 01FF. Page two, similar, and so forth, all the way down. If you look at how they're structured, all of them, every page has the same two, uh, has the same byte, two hex values um, for its up for its upper byte. So, example, page zero zero, everything, every address in it starts with zero zero. In page one, every address starts with 01. Page 2, every address starts with 02, and so forth. Um, and if you go all the way down to page 255, every address starts with FF, which if you convert that to unsigned binary is, or sorry, if you convert that to unsigned decimal is 255. Because of that, we get a nice uh, way to divide this up that if you have a two byte address, the first byte is its page number, and the second byte is its position within that page. Uh, can also be called the offset within that page. Now, as it turns out, the zero page, um, well, we'll go to the turns out part. The zero page is, is literally that page zero stuff. Now, as it turns out, that there's a special addressing mode we can use to access addresses in the zero page itself. And that addressing mode is faster than normal absolute addressing. Now, I don't remember how much faster you'd have to go look at the specs, but you probably save a, a cycle or two uh, of, of speed, which in the 6502 days was, was a lot. It's absolute addressing, but it only works for addresses in the zero page. Because the zero page is assumed, we can actually drop this part from our address. And we can specify our addresses as a single byte between 00, zero and FF. So when we talk about the zero page address mode, we have an instruction like LDA and the address after it is a single byte. 
that single byte is assumed to be the offset within the zero page. So the computer, when it executes a zero page address mode instruction, it automatically uh, puts zero zero in front of the address. To, so to make it the full 16 byte address, it'd be zero zero plus whatever is here. So how do we tell the difference between absolute and zero page addressing? It all boils down to how many bytes are in the that uh, that address. If it's a two byte address, it's absolute addressing. If it's a single byte address, it is zero page addressing. So here, LDA uh, one zero AB has two bytes. It's absolute. Here, LDA eight F has one byte. Therefore, it's a zero page. Here we have LDA008F, two bytes, so it's absolute addressing. Now, these two instructions are equivalent. Functionally, they will do the exact same thing. They'll go out to address 008F and load it into the accumulator. The zero page one just happens to operate a little faster. Uh, and then our last example, uh, load into the accumulator from 00, zero. that's obviously a zero page address because it's one byte long, um, functionally equivalent to LDA 0000, zero, zero, zero which is two bytes long at absolute. Both of those are going to grab the, the byte of data at uh, address zero. I've told you all that and now I'm going to tell you don't use it. So we're going to use the zero page for something later, but in general, um, we we're going to avoid using zero page addressing in our, our code. Uh, the reason is on the Commodore 64, all but about four or five, I can't remember, bytes of the zero page are taken up with uh, the C64's kernel. And we don't really want to overwrite that stuff. So we're going to avoid, uh, for the most part, uh, doing reading and writing stuff into any of the addresses in the zero page, um, even even avoiding doing so with, with absolute addressing. But we will, in a few minutes, do something else with the zero page. So it's good to know about it. Next, let's talk about indexed addressing. So this is an address mode with two operands. Uh, the first one is an absolute address. And the second one is either X or Y for the X or Y register. The effective address that we're dealing with is that absolute address plus the contents of the X or Y register. So for example, here we have load into the accumulator, address 5000 comma X. So if the X register contained the value hex 43, the effective address is the sum of those two things, 5043. Um, it turns out there's also a, uh, a way to do uh, indexed with the zero page uh, using the X register. Just ignore that. We're not going to we're not going to deal with that ourselves. Now, why would we use indexed address modes? It turns out they're very useful for dealing with uh, arrays of data. So later on, when we're going to when we're going to construct loops from branches and jumps, we're going to have something where we're loading from a base address with an offset. So we we might have have some data, for example, the string H E L L O for hello that starts at address four zero or zero zero four zero, and there's several you know each successive byte is part of that string, we can vary x from 0, which is the first character, to 1 for the second character, 2 for the third character, 3 for the fourth, and so forth, um, and do that to go all the way through our string as part of a loop. So the, the, these indexed modes become real real useful for us there. Uh, they are limited to 256 uh, when we do that. So that and that can be uh, hard to get around, especially when we're dealing with screen memory and things like that. But uh, we're not going to worry about that now. Maybe later. But you, you kind of get the idea if this were an array of characters that we could use X as the index into that array. And now you're also starting to see 
why our arrays and our lists and things start with index 0. Because we're starting with a base address of the first element, and you wouldn't add anything to that to get that element, so you, which is the same thing as saying we'd add 0. So we can take the index of an array, add it to the base address of the array, and it gives us um, the element at that position in the array. And we can, and indexed addressing modes help us out with that. And so hopefully now you understand why all our arrays and lists and things start at index 0 and not uh, index 1. Uh, another thing to just mention here is most modes apply to most instructions. So we can do, so for add with carry, implements all of these and more. So we can do immediate, we can do zero page, we can do absolute addressing, we can do absolute indexed addressing. And the, the link here is one you want to go to you know, almost daily when you're working with, with 6502. It's a very good list of all the instructions available in uh, 6502. And more importantly, it shows you all the addressing modes they have. In fact, let's go to there. And hopefully I can bring it into frame. There we go. Um, I usually avoid the table. It doesn't tell me much. But here are, is the list of all of our instructions for the 6502. So let's pull up something interesting. That, uh, let's go straight to ADC. Add with carry. It tells you all the addressing modes that it can use. And we're going to talk about most of these before we're done. All right, last uh, kind of addressing that we're going to deal with is what's called indirect addressing. Uh, some of you may have already started programming in C or C++ and encountered a thing called pointers. So indirect addressing is pointers in assembly. And if you haven't had pointers yet, well, you will, and hopefully you'll think back to when uh, I talked to you about uh, indirect addressing, and it um, gives you a little idea of how things work. So in indir indi indirect indexed addressing, we have a memory location whose contents are an address. In other words, a memory location's contents are the address of another memory location whose contents we want to bring in. So there's kind of two, two steps there to get to where we need to go. Sometimes it's easiest to show an example. Uh, I'm going to start by loading y into, uh, loading 0 into uh, my y register because I'm not going to use an offset. Effectively, I'm loading into the accumulator the address stored at 0 page FB, and I'm adding into it the value of y, which is 0. So what I do is I go out to FB and FC because it takes two. Uh, consecutive memory uh, locations to build a 16-bit address, 2-byte address. And I look at the um, the address these things make. And of course, this is little Indian. So the 5.3 is the low byte. The A0 is the high byte, um, the way they're laid out in memory. So the low byte is stored first. The high byte is stored second. Put those together, we get address um, a053. So because this is indirect, we go to A053 and pull that value in. So there's kind of a, a, a two steps there. We load indirect. This the we we look at this address, which can only be in the zero page. We find the the address that is stored in it and go to that address to get our value. We can build effective addresses uh, this way. There's always two operands. The first one is a zero-page address. Now, some some other CPUs don't require it to be in the zero-page. 6502 does. Um, this zero-page address is the low byte 
of a t of two consecutive um, addresses. So if I talk about load uh, the FB as my zero page address, we're really talking about FB and FC, the next next one up, and that gives me my low and high byte respectively. The Y register contains a value that is added to the address we pull out. Um, and it, we, a note that we can't use X register for this. So, got a couple of, of, of instructions here. The first one, I'm loading hex 100 into the Y register. Then I have a load into accumulator instruction. Indirect indexed off of FB, comma Y. So we look at the address stored in FB, which is going to be um, B2FF, because we store the low byte first. So B2FF, and then we're going to add 100 to it. So my effective address is hex B3FF. Again, we have some caution we, we have to take. Uh, I told you before that very little of the zero page is available to us to use. Uh, almost all of it is taken by the Commodore 64 kernel. There's really only four bytes we can use for indirect ad addressing, or indirect indexed addressing, and that's addresses, um, zero page addresses FB through FE. So FB and FC forms an address, FD and FE forms an address as well. Um, and kind of the, the way you would use them is one might be the um, uh, a, the start address of, of, of something you're copying from. The other might be the start address of something you're copying to. Use these as temporary spaces to hold your target addresses when you're setting up uh, indexed indirect uh, addressing. And there are times when you will need to do that. Uh, last word today, there's something called indexed indirect addressing. Um, I'm only showing you this because you may see it in, in some literature. It uh, looks something like LDA, and the parentheses are around both the zero page address and an X. Forget you ever saw it. Uh, this is, it's something that's rarely used for what we need, and um, it can be kind of hard to reason about, so don't... Uh, don't uh, worry about that and don't pay attention to it. All right, uh, that is address modes. Those are the ones you will need to see. We'll uh, have some exercises to work on these in class. As always, let me know if you have questions. Thank you.